Hey runners, welcome back. My name is Sasha Handel and we're here with Well and Good's Trainer of the Month Club and today we're gonna be cooling it all the way down. So this cool down is geared more on flow and breath, similar to a yoga sequence. So don't be too concerned with how many reps you're doing or how much time you've spent, but rather focus on really digging deep into the movement and trying to settle into the stretch. Movement number one, we'll start with our feet nice and wide, and we'll just take it to a forward fold. The first one, we'll interlace our hands in the back allowing ourselves to drape forward. And then we'll just alternate by stretching and interlacing your hands through the front. Awesome. So as you drop your head down towards the ground, allow those knuckles to reach up for the sky. And as you reach the palms of your hands forward, allow your hips to really shift back behind you. What's great about this stretch is that the weight of your upper body and the length of your arms here works as a really, really beautiful way to get into the backs of those legs. Lovely. All right, so next we're gonna go for a forward fold with a pendulum, and that's just gonna get the legs out a little bit wider. We're gonna fold yourself forward from the hips Grab a hold of either elbow, allow your chin to fully tuck, and like a pendulum, we'll just shift the weight from one foot all the way to the other. And as you create this swinging motion in the upper body, you should feel the stretch through the right leg and through the left leg. The stretch will intensify as your body comes over that specific leg. So if it feels really good, you can hold it there for a breath or two and then start to pendulum swing in the other direction. Oh, this feels so lovely. Allowing yourself to just completely release, completely surrender to the stretch is all that we can truly ask for from a cool down. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is bring our feet together. I like to hug my knee into my chest. And yes, there's a bit of balance involved here, but if you wanna take it a step further, we'll just twist over that front knee. Doesn't have to be too much work. Take a deep breath, try to relax the shoulders, bring it back to the center, and then we'll just switch sides. I think everyone deserves a big hug after a long run, or really any effort. So go ahead and hug that knee in really close. Hold yourself tight. Give yourself a nice pat on the back and then switch sides. I like this stretch because it gets into the back side of my hips and it allows a little bit of space for the thoracic spine, which is right in the center. And typically when I get a little fatigued in my runs, my lower back and my glutes will get a little lazy and some compression will start to happen right in that spot in your back. And so this allows to release that compression and grant yourself a little bit more space. All right, one more time. All right, okay. Next thing we're gonna do is going to keep us targeting the back side of the body, AKA the posterior chain. I like to call this a crisscross waterfall. So you'll reach your arms up, up, up over your head. You'll cross the body with the inside arm and take it to the outside of the ankle. You'll reach up again and you'll take the outside arm and reach it to the inside of the ankle. And we'll stay on this leg for another 30 seconds. That way you can really get in and create some more space. I like to exhale as I fold myself forward. Make sure that you've relaxed those toes, you're digging into those heels, and you're really pushing back through those hips. One more time, and now we can switch sides. 
kickstand the opposite leg. Reach up, 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 cross your body inside the ankle, and then cross your body to reach the outside of the ankle. I think it's worth noting that when you're doing this, you wanna try to have a soft bend in the supporting leg. That way, your hips are fully free to go as far back as needed to stretch those hamstrings. Lovely. One more time. We'll take it up. All right, and now this last standing cool down exercise. We'll take your feet as wide as you can get them. We'll bring our hands to the inner thighs and it's kind of like almost a dance move. We're shrugging our shoulder and we're pushing that opposite knee as far open as our hip will allow and we're looking over the right shoulder. We'll come back to the center. We'll push through the right knee We'll drape the right shoulder and we'll look over that opposite side. So what we're trying to do with this movement is push the knee in one direction and twist the body in the opposite direction because that opposing tension is what's gonna be able to create lots of space for those hips after they've been in flexion for the duration of whatever run you've just come back from. All right, sweet. I'm feeling pretty limber, pretty loose, and now we're gonna take it down to the mat. So our next movement is just gonna be a downward dog to an upward dog. So let's get into our downward dog. You can walk yourself out into a plank position, but I won't keep you here for too long. We'll make sure everything is about shoulder and hips distance apart. You'll pike your hips up, and as you get here, you wanna be able to really lift through the hips but drive down through the heels. And if your heels don't actually touch the ground, that's not a problem at all. You can start to work for that space by pedaling through the legs. You can drop one heel at a time and bend the opposite knee to allow for a little bit more length. We'll shift it forward. We'll drop the knees down first, untuck the toes and kind of drive your heart right through the center of your biceps, allowing your chest to open up dropping your chin down, and then we'll just cycle right back through. So the downward dog is hips up, and the upward dog is hips down. Finding a beautiful natural breathing pattern here is gonna be really important. I like to exhale through the downward dog, and I like to inhale as I lower my hips down to the mat. All right, we'll do one more. And then we're gonna take it to a version of your downward dog called a three-legged dog. You'll get into your downward dog, you'll float your right leg up, and at the top you can bend your knee, bringing your heel towards your butt, allowing for a lot more space in those hips, and then we'll bring that bent knee right underneath your pelvis, and we'll settle into a pigeon pose. So this is gonna be a bit fun for lots of us with different ranges of motion in our hips. And so I would say starting here is a great place to settle in. But if you think you have a lot more space and you want to dive a little bit deeper, then you could just bring it down to the elbows. And if that feels really great, allow your forehead to come all the way down. I like the static stretch. But for the sake of this cool down, we're gonna keep things a little bit more dynamic. So we'll come right back up, three-legged dog. We'll drop it into the pigeon. We'll bring our hips as close to the ground as possible. And then we'll just repeat. So a three-legged dog and then a pigeon. We'll do it one more time on this side. Tuck your toe, lift that leg, open up those hips, maybe do a few ankle circles and then settle in here. Walk it down one more time. Take a deep breath. And then we'll do it on the other leg. All right, float that left leg up, heel to butt, 
gaze is underneath your armpit, and then we'll bring it right underneath your pelvis. All right, we can do it one more time. Bring it all the way up, open it all the way up, a few ankle circles, and we'll settle into this final pigeon. You should really feel lots of space through your left glute here, and you wanna fold yourself forward, extending through the crown of the head, elongating as much as you can through the spine and just exhaling to surrender into the stretch. All right. We'll take it to your back now to finish things off, and then you should be successfully all cooled down. Here, what we're gonna do is lie on our back, extend our legs out nice and long, hug your right knee into your chest, Bring it over your left thigh, and then we'll bring that entire shape into a figure four. So from here, you should be feeling lots of tension in this right side. And the closer you bring your left thigh towards your chest, the more intense that tension will become. So you can play around with it, find what feels delicious and comfortable for you, and then when you're ready, we're gonna drop that left leg Allow those legs to fall all the way over and then extend your right arm in the opposite direction, creating almost this twist, like you're wringing out the water from a towel. And we're just letting go of all of that compression from the center of the body. We'll come back and we'll do it all on the other side. So we're gonna fold left leg over right. We're gonna bring that right thigh in adjusting for the intensity that feels good for you. And then once you feel like you've settled into this space, we're gonna go ahead and drop both of those legs over to the right as we reach your arm over to the left and allow for that thoracic spine twist. If you wanna to add to the intensity, you can always bring that arm right on top of the thigh and pull it a little bit closer to create that tension and pull a little bit further into it. Sweet. I feel very, very much cooled down. And if you would like to cool it down, subscribe to Well and Good for more videos just like this. Thanks for tuning into Trainer of the Month Club. I'm Sasha Handel, and I'll see you later.